Hello, everyone, and welcome back into the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. And to conclude today's show, one of my favorite segments to present to you guys every single week, my fantasy fact versus fiction. I look into some bold myths and claims this week, potentially circulating in fantasy football circles and either justify or debunk them. And this week, I tried to go bold. It's Thanksgiving week, guys, so I have to go bold and big in everything I say and do here on the show. But I feel like each of these predictions stems from some uncertainty surrounding certain situations, but also a feeling that certain things aren't quite as they seem, if that makes sense. I feel like Some teams and situations are a mirage, and some things that we're saying aren't necessarily going to come true, or either going to be perfectly true when it's all said and done, if that makes sense. Because this is such a weird week, a lot of games going on, a lot of different days, so I'm going to try and get as weird and wacky as these games are to conclude today's show. Starting off, potentially, everyone's big kind of talking point in terms of football in general, not just from a fantasy perspective, the actual Thanksgiving Day games, because this is a slate that's not necessarily the most inspiring of slates, and it's still one you know that could be intriguing, but I said that this Thanksgiving is a fantasy snooze fest, as you see this guy suggests here, being something that is not necessarily appealing a fantasy perspective either. And while a lot of people are going to say, well, yesterday you mentioned that the Giants-Cowboys game could potentially be exciting, I didn't necessarily say it was exciting for position players. I think both of these special teams units in this very sloppy affair could be potential interesting pickups and sleepers in this game, but I feel like as an all-encompassing event, a lot of these games are inspiring. I think the Dolphins-Packers game is potentially the best you can get, but it's going to depend on, you know, the Dolphins trying to pick apart that feisty Packers defense in terms of takeaways. But then you have Bears-Lions and Giants-Cowboys. Not necessarily the best games in terms of overall competitiveness because I feel that the Lions are just going to dominate in that affair. Jared Goff loves playing on Thanksgiving. And then the Giants, Cowboys, I would love to think that some guys might step up and be heroes for their teams, but it's going to be a sloppy affair, like I said. But look for both special team units to potentially give you some good fantasy points if that's a silver lining for you. But ultimately, very, very, very uninspiring in terms of games for the Thanksgiving Day slate. Potentially a nice game to conclude that day. But then, here's where I kind of got a little bit of a sense for both of these teams in this matchup because this match was also been talked about a lot from a perspective of well both of these teams are seemingly headed in different directions but I'm trying to give one of these teams the benefit of the doubt and this game is of course the 49ers Bills game and I think it's not going to be a disappointing game fantasy wise if Purdy doesn't play and I feel like the reason why I say this is because this team just feels like one of those teams that can operate ably enough to compete with anybody. That game against Green Bay was kind of an illusory game where the 49ers couldn't even get a foothold in that game. And I feel like, you know, even though there's going to be so many questions about the injuries in this one, what could have been in this one, we have to focus on the fact that this is still a 49ers team that has the belief within itself that it can compete with anybody. And whether it's Brandon Allen or Brock Purdy, this is a 49ers team that you still have to account for. And I feel that the Bills, excuse me, are a team that, yes, are looking mighty fine and high right now. But there's still kind of that seed of doubt in my mind where they occasionally have one of these games where they look a little bit sloppy. And this could be it. And so I'm looking for certain details and certain aspects of this game in which it could be a lot closer. And from a fantasy perspective, there might be some hope and optimism for players who have 49ers on their rosters. So that's why I feel like this game 
is going to be truly bizarre in nature no matter who's the starting quarterback because I think it's going to be much closer without Purdy and certainly a much more exciting game with him. But when all is said and done, a lot of fantasy production can be taken from this just because both of these teams, 49ers, still with a lot of talent the Bills, we already know what they can do in terms of fantasy coming together. And I just feel like I can't ignore this game because of all the injury woes hanging over it. So that's why I feel like I gotta say, even though it's a little bit risky here, this game won't disappoint if Brock Purdy shouldn't play. My third prediction here, even though it says, okay, I did get the right defense there. I was a little bit worried there seeing the purple. That was the Ravens defense. Cardinals and Vikings defenses will be the best, and I think this is a fact. I feel that that Cardinals-Seahawks game was a little bit weird in terms of how the Cardinals' defense looked because, you know, they allowed some big plays to happen. For the most part, they looked okay. They had that red zone pick, but that was mainly a Geno Smith decision. But ultimately, they still held Seattle to 16 points, and that might be the ineptitudes of certain situational moments for the Seattle offense right now, but it was still a performance that they can take away and say that they had some decent moments there. And then the Vikings defense is always one of the most consistent, and they have to be foaming at the mouth after that Seattle performance against the Cardinals because I think a lot of worries was in the run game for the Vikings and how they would have to defend a guy like James Conner and also James Trey Benson in that unusual kind of running style that the Cardinals employ. And it could be a little bit harder because we don't know if Ivan Pace Jr. will be back for this game, the steady linebacking presence for the Vikings. But either way, I still think the Vikings defense, because of Brian Flores, is still going to be hyper-aggressive in this one, trying to get after both Kyler Murray and James Conner and really muddy it up. So look for this to potentially be a defensive slugfest that gets decided by which offense can be more efficient, which offense can be more timely. And I feel that, you know, the Cardinals can have their moments against this defense, but ultimately it's going to be tough. It's going to have to come down to guys like Trey McBride getting open, and he did that very effectively against Seattle. But the Vikings' defense is a little bit of a different breed because they've been doing this all year. And I feel like that was just a day where Seattle's defense got it right and got after Murray and was after a bye as well. So potentially now that the Cardinals are in the flow of get playing a game every Sunday, they can step up in this one. But it's going to be a tough task because of what the Vikings' defense brings every week. And they're going to make Kyler Murray play hard for his win in this one. And so though, that's why I feel like both of these defenses have to be respected from a fantasy perspective especially, just because I feel like this is one of those games where everyone's expecting it to be a solid NFC matchup, but it's going to be a little bit disappointing because of the fact that these defenses are just so overwhelmingly good at what they do. So look for this to be a game that either way, from a fantasy perspective, goes the way of the defense or the offenses can get going here. So I'm just trying to monitor this, but for now, I'm going to say it's a fact. I'm firmly sticking it in the fact camp as of right now. And the last uh, kind of myth that I want to justify or to bunk here today is about Quentin Johnson, and I already kind of hinted at the fact that I feel like Quentin Johnson is going to continue this hot streak, even though you know that the hot streak was kind of messed up a little bit in last night's game against the Ravens, he's going to pick it back up again, so to speak. So it's not necessarily a continuation because of last night's game, but he's going to pick it up again against the Falcons' pass defense, like I said, is atrocious. Yes, you know, they might have fixed some things after their bye, but I just feel like it's going to be the same old story for them, right? They are too reliant on an offense led by a game manager at best to really supplement this defense enough to where it's not as vulnerable as against the pass. And Quentin Johnston's one of those guys who, yes, 
he's rolled with the punches a lot. Yes, we haven't necessarily seen that much consistency out of him. Yes, there are going to be a lot of questions asked about him in the long run ahead as the Chargers have to play more difficult games. But in this matchup, look for Quentin Johnson to stand out for his verticality. That's going to be a big thing. It's going to be a big hallmark of the potential success of the Chargers down the stretch here in very important games. Because I still feel that the Chargers are in prime position to contend in the playoffs just because of the versatility of this offense when fully healthy, mind you. Because last night was not indicative of what this Chargers offense can be at full strength. It was not a performance that I can take stock in against an opponent like the Ravens because of what happened to Dobbins. And so, against an opponent that, yes, is reeling a little bit, but is still seen as a team that can compete, at least in the NFC's playoffs, look for Quentin Johnson to show why this Chargers team can be special. Because whether or not J.K. Dobbins is playing, there are going to be moments where that shot downfield is going to be available to the Chargers, and Justin Herbert's going to want to take it because he has that in his repertoire. So... Even though, you know, it could be a little bit more challenging if the status of J.K. Dobbins is up in the air for this one. But Quentin Johnson is a special type of player who steadily improved his game over the offseason into the season now. And his lights are shining bright there in L.A. And even though, you know, it's not going to be something that the Chargers are going to want to have happen too often, it's something to monitor as this team progresses because it's really going to grow based off the timeliness of these receivers. Quentin Johnson's truly a special one. But that will just about do it for today's show. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. This has been the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast brought to you, as always, by the GSMC Sports Network. My name has been Chris Shepard. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow for our last show of the week at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Like, follow, and subscribe to the show on the network. As always, make yourselves available to the Super Chat, Super Things, and Super Stickers features here on YouTube. But other than that, for today, I am out.